Well, hello, folks out there on YouTube. Lane got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, Vols versus A&M for the national championship. It is definitely on. Absolutely. It couldn't be more on. Well, then you better bring it. Oh, it's already been brought in. Yeah, it's definitely been brought in. It's going to be a heck of a battle this weekend, starting tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern. And we're going to talk about these two teams, their strengths, their weaknesses, what's going on, who uh, will be starting, and all of those good things. Now, we pretty much know the Vols are going to go with Stamos, probably for an inning or two, and then they'll bring in Causey. That's typically been their Friday uh, starter, which is who they start out with. And I would think uh, Texas a and is going to go with uh, Prager. Now, Texas a and had some injuries. We're going to talk about that. Of course, the Vols had an injury too earlier in the season to one of their uh, primary players. But uh, let's take a look at their stats and all of that good stuff. Now, as you look at the uh, Aggies, as far as their uh, offense, they're pretty strong. They do have 133 home runs, but I told you we're going to talk about injuries. They lost one of their best players, and that's Braden Montgomery. He had 27 home runs this year. He got hurt in the, uh, I believe, the Super Regionals, broke his ankle, so they will be without his services. He's their best offensive player. They've also got another injury with uh, Jace Laviolette. He's got uh, 28 home runs, and he's nursing a hamstring injury. So that could be an issue for uh, him this weekend. And hamstrings are very tricky. I believe he plays in the outfield. And that can be, you know, they might have to put him as designated hitter or something like that. Because if you take off, you know, you'll pull that hammy every time once it's uh, injured. It's just a tricky injury. But you can still play with it. Like I said, you just can't take off running. Their catcher also has a bit of an injury. And they've got another fella uh, that's got a torn meniscus. So they're kind of limping around a little bit which is not abnormal this time of year. You get to the end of the season, you're going to have some injuries. So without Montgomery, they've really hit about 100 home runs, a little over, and you know the Vols have hit a ton. So I think there's going to be a pretty big advantage uh, for the Vols when it comes to offense. The Aggies are going to have to rely on their uh, pitching for the most part, and they've got a really strong pitching staff. That's sort of the heart of their uh, team because as you look at these averages, their best hitters at 333, and then they go down into the 200s here pretty quickly. They just don't have a ton of big hitters. And you'll see that's going to be an issue when they go up against Tennessee. We have a bunch. All right, as far as pitching goes, again, it looks like they're going to go with Ryan Prager, who will uh, start. He's 9-1 and one with a 2.88. He has. We have played them once. I believe we played them in the SEC tournament. He didn't last that long. He, he pitched okay, but uh, I think they had some errors and some problems uh, behind him. But uh, they've got a very good pitching staff. So that's who they're going to start with, I'm sure. And then they've got plenty of choices after that. You know they wanted to pitch uh, Shane Sadeo, but uh, he had an injury as well. So like I said, that was going to be, I believe, their starter. And then after Prager, they do have some good choices here. You can see from their um, stats right here, their ERAs. They've got several uh, players that are around three, which is a really good ERA in the college uh, baseball right now, especially with aluminum bats. So they've got plenty of choices, and their bullpen's strong. So for Texas A&M, they would prefer low-scoring games. They don't want to get into a shootout where it's like 10 to 8 or something along those lines. That would be difficult for them. They like those 3 to 2, 4 to 3 type games, and that's what they're hoping for with the Vols. And obviously you see it here for uh, Tennessee. Of course, Christian Moore is uh, leading at 385 average, and then uh, Burke is 382 all the way down. We've got, uh, let's see, five guys hitting over 300. A couple of guys close to 400, and then the home runs are through the roof. One, two, three, four, five. Five guys over 20 home runs, more having 33, with a total of 178 home runs. So we can hurt you all the way through the lineup. Even our guys that don't have a bunch of home runs, 11, 12, 8, 7, plenty of guys can hurt you. And we also hit for average. So they're going to have to deal with the toughest. Look, we've got the best offense in the country. They might very well have the best pitching. So it's probably going to be a pitching versus hitting. Now, Tennessee's pitching is pretty strong as well. We know Stamos and Causey in this first game. The second game will go with Drew Beam. He had a very good outing last time. And then after that, if we wind up in the third game, we'll uh, throw Seacrest, who had another great game. He's been our hottest pitcher. And he'll, uh, he would go Monday if, if needed. And the reason you can't mix that up, everybody's got a certain amount of rest they've got to have a certain number of days. 
and you need to go with the same uh, format that you've had through this uh, World Series. And we're obviously going to see a lot of the uh, bullpen for both teams. Uh, Nate Sneed, we'll certainly see him. He's been pitching really well. Kirby Cannell, I'm sure we'll see him. There's, we've got plenty when it comes to the bullpen. So obviously, we need to score some runs. We don't want to get into one of those uh, pitching duels. So that's not best for us. We want to play to our strengths, which is score, 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 and put as much pressure on them as possible. Now, the one thing they're going to do with us, they're going to try to play small ball. They're definitely going to try to steal bases. Of course, our catcher, uh, Cal Stark, he might try some pick plays at first base. Uh, he can definitely throw you out at second, but uh, they're going to they're going to try to run on us, and they're going to try to uh, create runs that way, and try to get that three, four, or five runs in any way, shape, or form that they can. They're probably not going to be hitting a lot of home runs, and we've not seen a whole lot of home runs at Omaha. As you know, that field is very big, and it's a good 20 feet uh, further than most of the uh, stadiums in college uh, baseball. And the wind's been blowing in a lot. So we're probably not going to see a ton of home runs like we would in Knoxville or uh, any of the other uh, smaller stadiums or smaller fields. So you're really looking at two teams that are, have different strengths. A&M pitching, the Vols offense. So in this, I would give a slight edge to Tennessee. I would not give them a big edge. I can tell you right now, Texas A&M is very good. They have lost almost no ball games at all in, in forever. They haven't lost. I don't think they've lost a ball game since the SEC tournament. As a matter of fact, we might have been their last loss. So, you know, I, I wouldn't expect anything but a heck of a ball game. And I think it's going to be an absolute battle. Hold! Give them nothing! But take from them everything! Oh, yeah, definitely. And for the Vols, look, I've been saying this the whole way through. We need to enjoy all this. You know, sweeping South Carolina and uh, wind up sharing in the SEC title with Kentucky was huge. That was really big. And believe me, South Carolina didn't appreciate that. Yeah, that's right. As a matter of fact, they fired their uh, head coach uh, shortly after that. And then, of course, we won the SEC tournament, was, which was huge. That's another title. Then we uh, swept the region. We did win the Super Regional. We had to win two out of three there. And then we swept our bracket all the way into the finals. And we could be the first team in 25 years to start out being ranked number one in the country and uh, winning the title, which is very rare in baseball because it is such a fickle sport. I mean, any team can beat any team when you get to a certain level. So I'm hoping for an epic uh, College World Series final. Two out of three, you got to win two games. And I'll be doing a, a pre-show uh, for tomorrow night. I don't know the exact time yet, but be looking for that. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's continue to cover all this big sports news. If you've not subscribed, hit this little button right here. It won't cost you a dime. Helps me out. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy based on your viewing history. We'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.